If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Holy cannoli! Oh, yeah, rigatoni! <laughs> wow, oh, that's I'm racist. Just throwing stereotypes <laughs> that's, out there. That's, <laughs> that's a racist. Hey, good time, man. We got a chance to head it's down the ball, uh. to San Diego and go see our boy Drew with uh, Organifi. And you know what? Since we've started this podcast, I gotta say, there's and it, let's pretend you could ha- you have to get a job and you have to work for somebody else. You cannot. Start a job or create something. Or Only something. two places I can think of. Oh, yeah, there's two places right now that I can think of that I would go work for, and one of them is Organifi. You guys, mm. he was, you know, the solar place. One? Yes. Yeah, what's, uh, what was it yeah. called? Same vibe. That's yeah. true. Solar City, dude. That's right. Elon. It's because it's because we walk in, shit's organized, people are all on the same page. Everybody's good on energy, the hustle, and everybody believes in what they were doing. You get yeah. that feeling. And that makes me feel good about partnering, you know, having partnered with a company. They like were Organifi. chanting for us when we came in, guys high five and coming over and taking pictures with us. I mean, what a cool atmosphere. And mm-hmm. when you walk into a place that you could just tell that mm-hmm. the, and then the war boards everywhere. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I just get awesome. my juices flowing. All the real time sales coming in. <laughs> yeah. Get no, you all no. jazz. It was really awesome. We met a guy who was like one of the new, new people there. And I guess he had won an award. And I was talking to him about like, well, what's your process when you're talking to people over the phone? He goes, I, you know, I, my goal is to find out what their goals are, see how we can help them out. And I was like, whoa, this is – Right. They're doing a good job. Yeah. And, yeah. And, they're all educated, right? Yeah. Like he, he definitely like fosters that uh, in his community That's where right. they're all getting certified and so they know what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. And Drew is a he's an, you know, he's an interesting guy. He's a cool guy. He's got a very fascinating story that he touches on in this episode that you're, you're right. about to hear. I want to apologize to him too because he was – you guys walked out – and we're talking to people out in the lobby. But when we left, so Vince Del Monte uh, had us speak at his seven-figure group or whatever, right? And so did Drew Canoli. And Drew was right after us. And you guys kind of went out, went outside. Well, I went over to help Taylor pack up the camera and computer and stuff like that because he was in the back. And people started getting up uh, while Drew was talking and coming over and like asking me questions as I'm loading up. And I'm like trying to whisper and stuff like that, but totally distracted. And he called me out. What he, oh, so, did he say yeah, something? Yeah, what did like, he say? He's like, hey, bro, like I can't, people I can't hear, you know, because so many people were starting to chatter in the back of the room. Oh, yeah. And uh, and he said, ah, but he was nice about it. He was really nice about it and shouted yeah, out some cool, love. Yeah, cool so guy. I just wanted to- I like the jacket publicly, he was wearing. Yeah. I like the, the rhinestone jacket. Shut he was wearing. up. You don't know oh, anything flashy. about fashion hey, to even say some hey, shit like man. that. Hey, I, hey, I'm hey, not saying anything bad. Hey, I'm hey, always, hey, hey, white Peter. All I'm saying is he had on a jacket and it had- Spikes, like I don't know what they were, diamonds or something in the collar, and in this, I don't know, it was something shiny. You're not a lot, dude. You're not allowed to comment on fashion. I'm not. Yeah, what I mean, am I saying? So I'm, I'm just being objective. I didn't say good or bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can't. All know. I'm saying is he had a jacket with shiny stones on the on the collar. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that's, that's all. I'm saying. Anyway, it was a statement. Anyway, I like Drew. I feel like he's somebody that you could you can hang around with and and, and bullshit with, and he seems like a pretty legit guy. I like it when he got into his childhood and when he yeah. got into what drove him. Mm-hmm. Because uh, it, it tells you a lot about somebody when you when you can go go down that path or whatever. Um, we are partnered with Organifi. They've been with us now for a little while. We like their products. So if you are going to take supplements, uh, you you know Organifi is a good option. They're all organic, high quality. They don't promise to do crazy things to you like other supplement companies do. If you go to OrganifiShop.com and enter the code Mind Pump, no space. Uh, they do hook you up with a pretty pretty fat discount, so we recommend you go over there and take a look. Also, I do want to mention uh, this month we are giving away two of our guides for free. We're giving away the the uh, intermittent fasting guide and the intuitive nutrition guide, which we normally sell. We normally sell those separately, and so what we're doing is we're giving those away for free if you enroll in the Maps bundle. And bundles are where we take multiple Maps programs and we put them together. For a particular goal, for example, if you you know sexy athlete bundle, that's for you know people who want aesthetics but also want to perform like an athlete. Or we have the build your butt bundle, that's self-explanatory. Then we have the super bundle, which is a year of exercise programming. So what we do is we take them, put all these mass programs together, and we discount them like twenty or thirty percent off. Well, this month get any bundle and also get uh, the guides, those two guides I'd mentioned before, the intuitive nutrition guide and the fasting guide. Absolutely for free. You can find that at mindpumpmedia.com. And so without any further ado, here we are interviewing the 
founder of Organifi, uh, Drew Canoli. We were uh, boots and cats and boots and cats, boots and cats and 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 boots and not yet. Yeah. So I don't know if you knew this, but uh, I looked up a study. I thought it was fascinating. Ashwagandha, which is one of the ingredients in your green yeah. juice. Mm. Did you know that it increases uh, seminal volume? <laughs> so, <laughs> that is a fact. Did yeah. you know this? Sir. I mean, I did know that. I, I, feel, like, yeah, I yeah. feel like that should yeah. be called the gold. You never product. looked at that angle. <laughs> yeah. It seems yeah. more appropriate yeah. to me yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. So that so, was our, uh, our last. So we're just talking about how green. You know, we just thought that was interesting. Yeah, like uh, how potentially having green juice among all the other health effects could increase. Your load. Yes, and the more <laughs> and the more you drink, the bigger your load gets. That's it. Wow. That's, yeah. I told you guys just from personal on, experience. Man. See, so we expect some. We got check out his products. Instagram, by the yeah. way. It's, it's yeah. the story's off fire. <laughs> Talked about that a little bit. So we walking in this place, man. What a what a great vibe you have in your in your in, in your headquarters here. The big thing that stands out. You know, we have a lot of experience working for you know large fitness companies and in, in their sales managing their sales teams and outreach and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a very strong presence in here of of that. I get that vibe in here with all the, you know, the metrics and stuff you guys measure. Where's that come from? Did did you have a background in understanding how to, you know, how to how to streamline things and maximize your outreach before you started Organifi? Like where's your ex- <laughs> where, where was your experience with that? I think uh, that's a great question. We really had no background. It's the culture that we've created since the beginning. Even when there was two of us, it was very much indoctrinated in each person from the beginning of our culture. And that is hiring people on their energy versus experience and um, their experience, right? So energy is the big focus out here. You can feel it when you walk. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You can tell us as you walk in this So place. we have book club once a week. We've been doing that for the past seven years with Fit Life TV. We read a book together a week and then we talk about it. We have events together. So it's a strong family feel. I think that's mm-hmm. what you're feeling out there. And, uh, you know, our tagline for the whole company is we're in this together. So mm-hmm. people can be massively vulnerable with each other out there and then mm-hmm. also um, work out together. People like cry and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> if they're not hitting their numbers. <laughs> oh, man. That's what I was going to yeah. say. So who's the, who's the hard sales guy who comes in and has the reco meeting and stuff like that? I mean, gets everybody in here and hypes everybody up. Is that yeah. you or does somebody else chest do that on your team? Kind of meeting? That, that would be David Lapica. Okay. Yeah, he's our persuasion expert. He calls himself Wait, wait, wait. What? Persua- persuasion he, expert? Yeah, he oh, calls himself. Oh, yeah, what a great <laughs> he title. Himself, actually, he calls himself the chief of persuasion or something like that. The <laughs> COP. I'm like, the COP. The COP. You know, the COP. <laughs> the COP. You know me. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's different. You, you, a lot of, and, and maybe it's because uh, of new media, maybe because the, the way things are, are changing and turning the way we, we're reaching out to customers. But in the past, you know, supplement companies put their products on the shelves and tried to have good packaging and, you know, marketing in magazines. And that was yeah. it. But what it looks like out here is you guys are talking a lot to your customers, like actually getting on the phone with them and trying to discuss what a good approach would be to their health and much more than just taking Organifi supplements. And correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like that's the approach you guys take. Absolutely. We don't want people calling in and uh, feeling like they're not heard or choosing a supplement that's not really for them, mm-hmm. you know, because there's a thousand supplements out there, millions actually. And we want them to be uh, custom for that individual person. So when they call in, it's literally a coach, somebody who's been through our program, mm-hmm. our training and teaching them to be a fitness slash nutrition specialist. Many of them, I think most of the people out on the floor right now, except for the new people all have certifications. Uh, precision nutrition is a big thing that we've been mm-hmm. through. Um, all of this, just so they can get on the phone and really have a dialed in phone call. And sometimes, you know, the the client gets off the phone and they don't buy anything. And that's fine because they didn't need it or it wasn't for their body type. But most of the time, they're out here inspiring them to uh, start a 90 day transformation, taking before and after pictures, committing to something. And then at the end of 90 days, by taking the sunrise to sunset bundle or the different superfoods that we have, their mm-hmm. life is completely changed. Wow. Which is cool. So there was three TVs that you guys saw when you came in. Those have rolling testimonials on them. So oh, that's cool. Before and after photos of people that have gone through the system and have used the products to change their life. So what, what brings whole, that realness to it? Yeah, so the stories. Actually, yeah, they can focus. That's a good idea. So I, I think it's important. We we also talk a little bit about you because you obviously started the company and you spearheaded it. And uh, I think that uh, that's an important thing to understand about a company. It's the people who 
you know, why did they start it? What what drives that person? I'd like to know a little bit about you and your history. What, like, what did you do before <clears throat> Organifi? What, did, did you work for yeah. other people, or were you all were you a serial entrepreneur? So I was an entrepreneur. I've worked in corporate America for about ninety days. I worked out of college. This company called Quicken Loans. Oh yeah, yep. oh, And wow. I'm Quicken salesman, Loans. you know. So four thousand mortgage bankers. I was like top ten the, when I first started in ninety days, which was awesome. I'm like, I can sell, you know. And then I got my ego took over as a young man, and I'm like, well, I'm gonna go down to Florida, and this was like the height of the real estate boom, and I'm gonna sell mortgages. <laughs> so I did that, and. I think 2006, Oh man, Florida was like the crux of it. It was like the Mecca oh, for all those Wasn't that, fraudulent law. Lo- so they, I was, I almost got caught up yeah. in one of those. It was when I, after, after I bought my place, that was in 2003. I think it was in 2005. I was looking at property in Florida. And back then you could get what they were doing, which was, because it was a no doc situation, right? I didn't even have to fill out anything to say, right? <laughs> yeah. And then you would buy, everybody was doing this. You would buy these properties in Florida for like, 200 grand by the time you close it was already worth like 220 yeah and then it, guys were being able to take money out on that and then go right into another property i had buddies that picked up like 30 properties what could you what could possibly go wrong yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did that happen so weird what yeah. happened were you there when the shit hit the fan? no i wasn't there when it hit the fan i was there for long enough i made a bunch of money uh just selling mortgages doing everything <clears> the right <throat> way and i made enough money to be like yeah, i'm gonna start my own company so then i started a finance and debt settlement company which is that's an interesting pivot yeah which is <laughs> like i'm just gonna do this i was chasing money right My actually whole, actually very serendipitous money. if you think about it with the housing market yeah now, okay yeah so i was just chasing money and every night i went to bed and i was like oh, i'm just not happy doing this it was all about money to me and i sat down with a mentor for two years his name's frank he's like this 87 year old sage And he said, if you do anything at all, make sure you're changing people's lives with what you do. Make sure you're touching people, inspiring them, that kind of stuff. And I never took it to heart until one day I'm just, I had an epiphany and I'm like, you know what? And up until that point, I was drinking every weekend just to kind of escape. And I wasn't following my life's passion or the bliss that I had in my heart. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna listen to Frank. And I've always been into health, but I was 40 pounds heavier at the time. I was out of shape. I was lazy. I was lethargic. I was tired. And this was seven years ago. So I'm like, what if um, I started a transformation and I started talking about health and maybe it turns into something, maybe it doesn't, but I'm, at least I'm doing something that I love. Right. I always loved it. So I got out a little HD flip cam, <coughs> right? One of those old school ones with the little USB port that you could just plug in your computer. And I started making videos and just posting them on YouTube of my transformation way back in the day. And uh, people started to follow and it was crazy. We picked up like four, now we have like four and a half million followers. But in the beginning, um, you know, people are watching this stuff. We were right at the beginning of like the juicing thing before Suja and all these juice companies started up. And I was teaching everybody how to juice from their home and getting into all that. So we developed this community first, Fit Life TV. And then we d- were like, what could we create that could serve our community to the highest level? And that's when we produced Organifi. Mm. Right. Oh, really now, cool. now, so you built your audience first. Built which the audience is something first. We talk about a lot. That's yeah. that's really, you know, sort of where I see a lot of companies succeeding now that, you know, they focus on, okay, how do I build this community? How do I build this tribe? And then figure out from there what they need and what they want, what they're mm-hmm. looking for. I, I want to back up to the 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 moment where you realize that the the chasing the money thing. Because I, I grew up, and I think you have kind of a, a rough upbringing like I had yeah. growing up, and that was part of uh, my drive. I was just financially, I, I wanted things because I didn't have things. I didn't have things mm-hmm. growing up, and so I was driven by that. And then I think you reach a point where you start to make uh, probably more money than what you thought you would as a kid, and then you get to there and you don't you realize that you're not as fulfilled. What were some of the signs that that you saw like in your life that like, like this you know this thing that I was been driving probably for twenty plus years of your life to get after is just not yeah. what I thought it would be. Um, some things in my life that show up for that, like when like that yeah. said that you know, said that for me, I'll tell you like when I was going through it, I I mean when you first start making that money, it feels great, you know, because you worked so hard your whole life or you wanted it as a kid growing up so much. And then I found that, you know, if I ever wanted to do anything, I had to pay for all my friends all the time. And it was like, and I did that for a couple of years. And then after a while, it was like, I was out of shape. I wasn't healthy. I was just, I had all this money in my pocket, but then Mm -hmm. I didn't feel happy. I didn't feel really happy. And I realized that having all these things wasn't what was going to create that fulfillment for me. Do you remember that moment for you? Like, Absolutely. What what was it? Yeah. So 
it was, I was making great money, money coming in every single month from the credit and debt company. But as much as I spent, um, it didn't matter. I just still felt empty inside. My soul wasn't fulfilled. And um, I just realized in, in that time, it's like I could continue on that trajectory and that path and do something that I didn't absolutely love. And um, I, I actually had like a near death experience in a dream. I'm a big dreamer at night. So I had this dream that I died and I only saw a few people at my funeral. And I didn't really move that many people in my life, in my funeral, in this dream. This is funny you're going this way since yeah. what I talked about last exactly. night. I know. So we're, yeah, it's it's, it's a trip that what you're about to say right now. Uh -huh. This is what I talked about last night. Keep going. Sorry. And then I, uh, and then I woke up and I'm like, wow, I need to make some changes. So then full environment change. So I used to live in Tampa, like I said, Florida. And I decided to move completely from my friends that were also in that environment. Because the first level, logical levels of neurolinguistic programming and identity change is environment. So I had to get out of my environment. So I didn't know anybody here, moved here all the way from Florida. That's when I started filming videos for YouTube and stuff like that. But it was looking at my life that way. Like, what do I want my identity to be, which is the top of the levels? And then how do I change my beliefs? How do I change who I'm hanging around, my environment to actually get to that identity? And I just started writing about it seven years ago at Fit Life. And I started writing about the testimonials that I wanted to have coming in from our people one day of that have lost massive amounts of weight and this was all like pre-script writing mm. like writing with the future in mind and then it just started to manifest itself out and now here we are i mean we're just kind of in the middle of it my goal in the very beginning was um to remove myself from the organizational chart to where <laughs> i could come and go wherever i wanted to go and mainly be the face and shoot videos and touch and inspire people and that's exactly where i am today mm. so when you made that transition uh, and you made that environment switch and you had friends and stuff that were in the same space as you, um, you probably had to sever some relationships with people. Um, what was that like? I think it's more of like a phasing out. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any direct stop. There really didn't need to be a direct stop because mm -hmm. it was just kind of like a slowing on the process. If you're not around, then that friend's going to kind of get the hint. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I was, they were still there because I moved. Yeah. It's like I'm moving, buddy. And I say the same thing. I tell people that it's like I, I just, I didn't tell people like break up. It's not yeah. like you break up yeah. with them. It's like you just start spending more time with those that are starting yeah. to, to bring you up and that bring more And there's nothing, there's no judgment yeah, right. sure. against those people. Right, right. Like they're awesome and I still love them. But it's where do you want to be mm. as a human? How many lives do you want to change? And are you're the average of your five best friends, but you're also the average of their five. So it's like this whole funnel. It's this whole ripple. And their beliefs about money, their beliefs about uh, spirituality, like all of that. Tell, so, me, tell, tell me, Drew, a little bit about your, your childhood and your relationship with your mom and dad. Yeah. Well, in the very beginning, and um, this was when I was born into this experience, I, I believe everything is a choice now. Like I chose to come into this life um, ancient religions believe that you have 13 years of your life that you actually choose and you see it before you incarnate in your, your body, your light body, right? So I chose this experience of uh, tremendous anguish. It was very painful. I was tortured as a kid. and Like literally? Like tortured, yeah. Like Navy SEAL training, right? Oh, wow. Like as a three-year-old, I'm in the tub and my dad would hold my head underneath the water and oh, shit. let me come up. And if I cried, he'd smack me and push my head back. Holy shit. Oh, wow. Three? Yeah, three. Wow. So I'm not saying this for anybody to feel sorry. Right. I'm not stirring up that type of emotion here. I'm telling you because this is empowering as hell. And coming from this state, one, you know, and lots of other stuff happened, but we don't need to go down that path. Um, coming out of that state, they deem me emotionally damaged and it would be hard to have a child at the age of five to adopt a kid and have them turn out normal, normal. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> luckily my parents in Michigan are just super human. My mom has like the biggest heart on the planet. Michigan mom um, didn't come from money at all. Like my parents probably made average $30,000 a year together. This is your biological this parents? Is my, no, no. My biological parents, um, that I don't even know. Like I was too young oh, to see. know how they did. Okay. But I was adopted into a family, uh, Jeff and Connie at the age of five, my sister and I, April, hmm. 
and it was a it was a rough couple years you know for them oh yeah because we were just so damaged oh right like i'd be sitting at the table and i'd be like can you please pass the fucking ketchup as Mm. a five-year-old because my parents taught me that swear words were cool you know and uh (laughs) like just all this stuff like all this repatterning and everything else and uh i've done a lot of work in my life now were you looking back were you do you feel like you were kind of a, a pain in the ass kid for your now new parents that have adopted you and brought you into their lives? Or no, you- no, no, no. I don't believe I was a pain in the ass kid. I believe I have, um, I had a certain set of uh, traumatic, traumatic um, situations in my body that I was experiencing as a kid. That I've. Um, were you connecting that back then, or is this you talking? This is reflecting. Now. Yeah, reflecting this is now. reflecting. Okay. And they were able to work through them really well. I uh, developed a huge ego at a young age, you know, young boy. I was really good at sports. I was athletic. So my um, my worth was put into that, mm. right, outside of me, but the external thing that I was creating. And that's that was a pattern with money as well and some other things in my life. So, yeah, dealing with that now is interesting. Yeah, what's that like? I mean, I'm sure a lot of yeah. those things resurface. And I mean, at one point, you had to start to piece that together, like the self-awareness. And, yeah. I mean- What's that like today? What's what resurfaces for you still well, to this day? There's still stuff that I'm working on, you know, especially self worth stuff. I mean, we all have it as human beings. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't know if you guys drove through Little Italy, but we paid to have a billboard in Little Italy that says "You are enough," mm-hmm. and that's all it says. And it's got a little Organifi thing on the bottom, but that's it, right? Yeah. And um, but we want people to know that, like, every single person has been through their own stuff, and it's it's great because Mm -hmm. it makes us human and part of this human experience is beautiful and the connection of going through it, the vulnerability is what really brings us together. Do you think part of that message is, is really for yourself too? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would always put uh, sticky notes around my house, subconscious reminders. So maybe it's about uh, spirituality or financially, you know, if I'm trying to hit a different goal, Money wise, like I'm going to put a little note on my computer and my shower and we'll look at it and my subconscious is going to absorb it. So why not just put it on a billboard and then have everybody absorb that type of. <laughs> yeah. When you get to this level, you can do dope shit like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I used to do the sticky pad thing. I'm not quite at the uh, level where I could throw a fucking $25,000 billboard. Up to remind <laughs> <me>. <laughs> That's a big sticky pad, man, yeah. right there. So, I mean, <clears throat> talk about some of the things that, I mean, I love talking to people like you who've who've been through a lot of shit and have had a lot of success. Um, What are the things that you're challenged with? And what, what, give me an example. I want to know a story in the last probably month that you've, you've struggled with something that's resurfaced from all the way from your childhood that you're still working on. Um, Well, I mean, still the, the external validation, Mm. right? So there's a piece of me that still does this occasionally. And it's, um, Part of it's because I know that, I'll give you an example. I just bought a, an Aston Martin, right? And I love it. It's been mm-hmm. a dream car ever since a little boy, like James Bond, DB11. Mm-hmm. And I got it and I fulfilled that dream, right? And then I'm, I'm kicking back after this seven day uh, fast that I just did. And I had this realization. I'm like, that's an amazing car. And I love driving it, it increases my frequency. But it's like now there's this deeper yearning in my body to want to like make a difference for people in other countries or people that have less than us. So it's like battling those two humans inside of me Mm -hmm. every single day. It's like, so do you feel guilty? Do Do you feel guilty? Are you going back and forth? Like, I feel kind of guilty that I bought this for myself or I mean, no, I don't feel guilty. Like I've worked through that. Okay. Um, but I just feel a little, uh, at this point, it's like, how can we play bigger in the world? How can we impact more people versus I focus on myself a lot. I'm so busy up even in, uh, you know, dream time, a lot of the work that I do at night. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so busy uploading how important I am into the super, super consciousness, right? We could call it that uh, I have less time to connect to the one or God, Mm -hmm. you want to call it whatever you want to call it that, um, and I just wish that I could have more humility, mm. you know, more meekness, that I could have more compassion. Do you? Pr- is human. there things that you practice to do that? Yeah, meditate. I pray every day. Mm. Like I have three different altars in my house. Like it's crazy. 
crystals all over the place. Like people come over and they're like, this energy in here is crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's wild. People just start glowing as soon as they walk in and I'm, it's, uh, and I set my life up like that, but it's still like, it's still a struggle for me Yeah, to live in this material 3D world and get outside of this, what you see. Right. Because human beings are all about this. Yeah. What do you see? Yeah. Right. You find that a hard balance too between what we're doing here at work yeah. versus then also incorporate what you're doing with your spiritual practices. Yeah. Well, I believe um, taking care of this is a spiritual practice. So it's a temple, right? And what we put in our body every single day increases our vibration, our frequency to impact more and more people. But yeah, like when we're focused on the body so much and transformation and six packs and Mm -hmm. it's, you know, I go to the gym for an hour and a half, two hours a day, body, 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 body. Like I just, um, yeah. Focusing on the spirit. Where where does all this talk come from? Where does the the spiritual talk and like, yeah, when did you start that? Where where, where does Uh, 10 years ago? Roughly. Was there a moment that something hit you and you're like, this is something that I'm missing in my life. Yeah, Totally. Because once you, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? It, um, one of the top, I think the top need is transcendence, right? Or spirituality. So all the other stuff, once you have safety, once you have money, um, food, shelter, all the bottom level base needs, you get to this place where it's like, what's next? How can I really make a difference? And uh, I find myself still fluctuating between pretty much the top three ones, but that's the one that I'm focused on mm-hmm. a little bit more nowadays. Yeah, the way I look, so, the way I've, I've started considering it more recently is that, you know, with your body and taking care of yourself, really it's it's the filter that your, what's deeper uh, receives information and transmits information. And like a filter, if it's clean, mm-hmm. the information you're going to receive and the information you're going to transmit is going to be more more pure because if you're unhealthy, if you're inflamed, if you're overweight, whatever, um, you're going to be receiving information through that filter. And so inevitably it's going to feel more negative. It's going to feel more, you're going to feel more attacked. You're going to feel like you have to be more defensive. Um, and if you clean that filter out, you'll start to see things m- more for how they really are. Mm-hmm. And I find more empathy um, when I'm healthier. And so that's kind of how I look at it. And I think in terms of the material stuff, um, you know, it's uh, it's a means to an end, but it's not the end. I don't think money is ever the problem. I think it's the worship yeah. of money that's the problem you know what mm-hmm. i mean and, and you try to fill that hole with worshiping all these other things and that it's it's just bottomless it's yeah. just an, you know an endless pit do you are you would you say you're at peace or would you say you're searching for it um i would say i'm at it yeah depending on the day as me tomorrow <laughs> it may shift when you're not at peace what's the turmoil um monkey mind stuff Mm. i'm just up here doing more of this than more of this Mm -hmm. they say the greatest journey that you'll ever take is actually 17 inches in your whole entire life and it's from your heart or it's from your head all the way to your sacred heart it's just 17 inches but i live so much up here Mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur as a business person you know we're constantly looking at analytics yeah we're always up here but getting more into this it's a it's a recipe for um anxiety, uh, paranoia, and depression mm-hmm. when you're in your head too long. Are those things you, you battle with? Um, here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have definitely in the past. Which one in particular? All of them? Or so anxiety or depression, anxiety, heavy breathing. Like mm-hmm. I experienced that for a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it's all interesting stuff. Um, not so much anymore because I think the fastest way out of that is taking care of this, the body, right? Mm-hmm. Going to the gym, working out, putting the right fuel in it, change your micro gut biome, um, and then also shifting to f- helping other people as opposed to focusing on yourself. Mm. Like I believe, um, and when you're living your soul's purpose, I think depression is really de-rest. It's resting from who you really are. So if you are who you really are day in and day out, there's no way depression can even touch you. Mm. Anxiety is just living in the future or the past. Do you feel like being you, in the present? Do you feel like you know what your purpose is now, or do you feel like you're this is your purpose now and it's yeah. gonna keep revealing itself? I feel like I'm always in purpose, like in every present moment. Because if I'm out in the future, then I have no power, right? Or if I'm in the past, I have no power. The only place I can change anything, the only place I can materialize or manifest is right here in this moment, right now. 
money has no, and, and that's the thing about money is it has no power in the present at all. Explain uh, that. So if you're so fundamentally attuned to this moment, money has no power, mm. right? Because mm. what can you do? I mean, you're here right now. You're breathing. You have everything that you need. Right. So you as a, you know, being as a miracle machine that you are, have all the power right here. But we live here so much in the future and in the past. And that's the creation of the ego, which is essential. Yeah. But uh, but I, it's also, you know, uh, it's it's one of our greatest strengths, but it's also one of our greatest weaknesses. And a, a guy like you, good looking guy, you make a shit ton of money, drive a cool car, charismatic. That's got to be a, a, a battle with your ego all the time. <laughs> it is. You know what's that li- like? Like, how do you how do how do you handle that? How do yeah. you handle? Do, are you in a relationship? Do you have a do you have a? I uh, I'm not in a relationship. Nope, single now. Okay. So and that just are sounds. You, like- are you a pain in the ass to date or what? <laughs> I, be honest. Uh, I, <laughs> I have. Uh, I'll, or I'll ask her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll find out. Yeah. No, I would say, um, like you guys, we have high expectations right for everything in life and i think relationship should be one that you also have those um not expectations but you know your non-negotiables right like what are they in a relationship what do you really want so for me it's it's aligning and finding somebody that's on that same page and since you're not you're obviously attracting the wrong ones so yeah have you been able to put your finger on your MO? I have. What is it? And I may have already found it. Hmm. So um, it's surfacing, but well, tell me I'm your... not a bridge to talk about it yet. Well, okay. So we won't okay. talk about the, the new relationship, but yeah, tell yeah, me yeah. about yeah. the uh, figuring out the, I'll tell you mine. Like, right. So I have this being the oldest, the re- childhood that I grew up yeah. with. I tend to, uh, I was going after these, the girls that I wanted to be like a father figure and a teacher all the time. Amen to that. Right. And that, and I, and I just kept getting those, those women. I thought it was fulfilling because it felt good at the relationship yeah. because. It felt I, good to your ego. Yeah. It felt fed my ego. Yeah. But then I realized that it would, these relationships would never last and I'd just be on to the next and it'd be the same thing over again. It took yeah. me until I was into my late twenties before I started to piece it together. Like, what is yours? What are you? Yeah. What do you, what do you Well, do? mine is that okay. it's being the father, the dad, yep. taking care of them. Because I never had a dad and I wanted to be that for somebody else, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I saw even my adopted mom, I saw her work three jobs and struggle and, you know, I, a bunch of stuff. And I wanted to be the king for my girl, right? Mm-hmm. Similar to that father thing. Um, so that's definitely one of them. I would say. I'm trying to like piece it together. Yeah, here. no, it's all good. I mean, I think it's r- super important. I think a lot of people do it, man. A lot of people mm-hmm. keep chasing their tail. Yeah. Deep. And I, so the other one that I wanted to share with you is because of um, what my ego sees me as is in the world, right? Mm-hmm. Like this successful entrepreneur, good looking guy, mm-hmm. like my ego. It's so fun. So crafty too, because it's always changing on us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> so for, Just yeah. when you think you figured it out. Oh, my God. It's insidious. And the harder you yeah. try, the stronger the, and more crafty yeah, it gets. Yeah. It's like you don't even know. And then you get to this place. And so my MO um, throughout most of my life has been to have arm candy. Hmm. Like the girl that's super attractive. You walk into a room and everybody's just... Right. Right? Mm-hmm. But also has a little bit of drama. <laughs> right like there's a certain level Weird, yeah. the crazy hot matrix exists okay <laughs> have like, you seen that, that exists yeah oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that that statistical graph we, please, showing we gotta make sure we put the link jackie make sure you put the link i haven't i haven't shared that youtube i have the unicorn yet. that yeah. exists yes. Uh, yes the unicorn so Such that's a- been the story of my life <laughs> and now i'm i'm realizing the older i get 37 that um you know it's more about friendship mm. and having fun like if I can have fun with a girl and go anywhere and there's no drama and it's awesome and, and she's beautiful, you know, she may not be the crazy hot matrix, like level 10, but <laughs> yeah. she's gorgeous. Like right. just fills up a room with energy, Inside and like out, spiritual right. it's a different beauty. It's like a spirit yeah. beauty. It's like inward beauty. And that's what I'm searching for now. Yeah. And, uh, I may have found it. Far oh, well. So we'll Holy see. shit. Yeah. Now you, you're, you're saying, mm. you're saying fun, but <laughs> I, it sounds like fun t- now is something different than what fun was before. Like, Absolutely. What, what was fun before? And what do you mean by fun now? 
Yeah, fun before probably would have looked like a really fancy, like way back in the day. Like, like a helicopter ride over San Francisco yeah, Bay. Like all this stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like, well, let's go to the park. Let's meditate. Let's grab the guitar and go play some music together and sing. Like really cool stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, if you, and if you think about it too, I mean, you, when you find that partner and you're going to be with them for a long time, mm-hmm. all that's that outward shell. It's going to change anyway, man. Mm-hmm. So you're looking for the arms candy, but you yeah. know, when you're 60, it doesn't even matter. Everybody's yeah. 60. It doesn't yeah, matter, exactly. Man. It's the other shit that's way more important. So more important. Yeah, and as you're talking about this potential new relationship, you're like glowing, which is which is hilarious. Thank you, bro. Why do you th- <laughs> why, why do you think this one's different? Like, what is it about it that that makes you feel like, oh shit, this is different than before? Because I'm not so physically like sexually drawn you know there's this point in a man where it's like oh phew, i gotta have sex with this girl like, yeah i don't it's there but i don't have that right like it's not this constant need it's more like i just want to communicate right. like i want to oh that's weird man so like, hang out. Connected, have this mental chat like let's connect our heads let's connect with what we're doing spiritually emotionally and then it's like whoa like yeah, get it. It's, it's it, a lot deeper. It, yeah, it's a it, lot deeper. Oh, it it'll add a whole new meaning to getting turned on. It's yeah. totally different way of getting turned on. Yeah. way better. Yeah, way way now, better. And they continue to get more beautiful the longer you're around them. And mm-hmm. you can you can you can see that how how they'll becoming how how in the future twenty thirty forty years down the line they'll be more beautiful to you than they were. Yeah, even the day you met them. Yeah. Right? Now being a self-aware dude and potentially have found a, a girl that is the girl you should kind of be with. W- what do you think are? What are the things that you're working on, knowing that you need to practice within the relationship? For example, I know that I'm uh, can I do a really bad job sometimes, like as far as expressing my love or or telling like Katrina like how important she is in my life. Mm -hmm. I I have, I live by the, you know, I'm with you. I take care of all these things. Like that's my love. I show you that's my, that's the way I, I give, that's my love language or whatever. Do you know what your love language is or what you have to work on? What is that? Um, so my love language is actually physical touch and uh, words of affirmation. And I believe hers are as well. Um, but, there's real simple philosophy. And I learned this from my psychologist two days ago. I've been working with this guy, Douglas Brackman, crazy works with all these Navy seals, like hunter driven people. And he said, there's only one thing you need to know in a relationship about women, right? Any struggle that you have, any problem that you're up against, there's only one thing you need to know. It's that she is always right. <laughs> and i'm cool with that when you're willing to be wisdom, cool oh, with that like everything yeah. changes like, simple as that yeah because yeah. they're emotional yeah and emotion is always shifting it's always changing it's a hurricane right and we're logical yeah. we're like this yeah all right you're right you know i messed up you were right yeah. like uh the yeah. storm will die down yeah. that's, a, that's a tough one to swallow but it's true isn't it? but it's fucking true it is with Sal right there real no clear. no it's a bunch it, of alpha males in here no it's very true i think it, to be a real alpha male is to just if you really want to be an alpha is to know is to be confident and know that many times you're not right yeah right. to surrender okay. And, and, and be able to take criticism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's what one a, of the hardest things. What a dynamic, though, it is to be like the this alpha leader of a huge company and then also be able to transition to the other side. I mean, that's that's what I feel like when you're really special. And then the other thing, too, is like I listen to you talk right now, and one of the things that's unique about being here is we've had a chance to talk to a lot of other uh, great minds, and the, I feel like there's two ends of the spectrum. We either have like the super woo-woo spiritual guy or you have like the fucking hardcore alpha businessman mm-hmm. and just crush at all costs, right? <laughs> and it's very I, rare as a hybrid, right? It's yeah. very, it is, it's well, very because rare it's be- been sold as a as a you're one or the other. You can't be both. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like if you're very spiritual and oh, you know self aware, then you can't be into money. Yeah, you, you can't, can't be into nice like material things. Yeah, yeah. yeah for one, yeah. absolutely yeah. not. You know what helped me with that? I was just understanding how uh, the, just the, the root ways that markets actually work. And if you're an honest individual and you work in a and in, mar- in a market-based economy, free market, and you do become very successful, it's because you gave people something that they wanted. Yes. That's really the only way to do it. Yeah. So when you see someone with all this success and they're honest, you can look at them and say, wow, that person served a lot of people. Yeah. However they chose to do so. Yeah. Is, is that something? And it's, it's just the laws, the laws of the universe, right? If you read Science of Getting Rich, 
by Wallace Waddles. The book was written in like the 1920s. It's a certain set of principles that applied in your life. If you do good, like you'll be rewarded for that. Mm. And I believe that. Mm. So uh, the law of cause and effect, you know, giving and receiving, like how much I got to be willing to give 10 times more than I'm receiving in any moment, mm. in any position that I ever have. In That's order hard for that. a lot of people to get yeah, that. Just be a giver, mm -hmm. give relentlessly. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. I it think does what, come back. Yeah. I mean, it always I, comes back. Yeah, hundred percent. But you know what? No, it, no, it doesn't always come back. So a lot of times it doesn't actually. And I think it's learning to be okay with yeah. that. Or it, it comes back well, in a way, way later. Expect. Yeah, in a different yeah, way. I think that's the mistake that people, they hear people like us talk about that. Like, oh yeah, you know, it comes back tenfold. And mm -hmm. then they go do things with the expectations of- oh, I'm right. going to get money for Well, they're this. doing things to produce this right. instead of just giving yeah. without any expectation. Yeah. That's why I it's think- a it's a different really, mentality. Yeah. What, what, after Organifi, where, 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 do, where, do, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? You know, do with you? Is there a plan for you at some point where you're like, okay, I'm going to exit this and and serve this other purpose, or is this something that's? I, I think um, my purpose is here. Mm -hmm. You know, now, uh, obviously, I want to make more impact in the world. So if that's helping with energy resources. Yeah, are those know, passions get, of yours? Getting also? Organifi on Mars for Elon. Yeah. The crew, <laughs> you know? oh, oh. Like red uh, juice. Yeah, red juice. Yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Um, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So those are passions. Mm. Like, how can we help humanity more? Mm. And um, yeah, giving your 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 upbringing and the challenges you had as a child, and then the fact that you you had some great parents, and now your purpose. Now, do you have and and now you seem to have found someone you think may be the one that you really connect with. Do you have any fears of having children in the future? Is that something no, you thought about? No, no, no. But I used to. Really? That was actually a big fear. Like when I was 18, 19 years old, I'm like, gosh, I'd be a terrible dad. Hmm. And then I just, you know, I went to work on that belief and absorbed it. I know I'm going to be the best dad ever hmm. and it's going to be awesome. That's so cool. I'm actually really looking forward to it. Really? Mm, yeah. Like you, you'll probably see me with a kid in like the next two years. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. I'm wow. Put it out there. Wow. Oh, yeah. The Look at that. You yeah. heard it here first <laughs> on mine. Put it on mine. Yeah. 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 It's coming. Keep drinking that green juice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get that signal volume up, buddy. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Best commercial oh, yet. Right. Oh, there. It went yes. full circle right there. <laughs> so <it>. much sperm. Drew, <laughs> <laughs> sure, what do you think? What do you think is some of the best uh, advice that you've gotten from your parents? Like, what are some of the things that have formed you into the man today that you? You look back that, that that was something that you got from your parents yeah so my mom was huge into heart growing up as a young boy so i was 14 right good looking kid and i had just done this photo shoot oh wait hold zoolander. on yeah. <laughs> zoolander style uh, blue steel huh? blue steel on yeah. a four winds was this boat company in michigan right so i was with these beautiful models all day and these girls and so i come home and i'm like mom i'm dropping out of school <laughs> I found my job. I'm going to be a model oh, yeah. at 14. She was stoked on that. And I'm my sure. mom just, she's like, son, she's like, I love um, you. I love you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. And I remember the conversation, but the long story short is it doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what you have, how much money in the world or anything else. She said, all that matters is your heart and what you do with that is what matters and that really resonated with me it's like all right well i get it i'm not gonna be a model now but yeah. did it resonate then or later i was I so like, pissed i was gonna say i, was, I feel like I if my so mom mad. told me that like, right heart after is I got cool up, but when you got a face like this yeah, yeah. come on mom <laughs> <laughs> you got a face like this <laughs> you gotta use this you know yeah god gave this to me <laughs> oh my god it's a travesty to not share it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the world <laughs> yeah um so that's always been good and my, my parents are very simple, simple people, which has been a big lesson for me too. Mm. Like they could just have so much, my mom would have so much fun just going to the beach and walking on the beach. Like that's her favorite thing in the world. So simplicity from my parents. Mm. Most fulfilling things in life are the most simple things and tend yeah. to be free. Exactly. They tend to be free. So, uh, you know, self-aware guy, I really like what you're saying. You sound like a great person and you have a supplement company, which the reason why we're working with you guys and why we, we you know, we only work with people that we, we believe in. They have to have integrity. We have to like the people that work there. Shauna, who, you know, used to work with you guys was great. We loved working with her. Um, but the supplement industry in general is a, uh, it's like a sea of bullshit. It is a, uh, I mean, we talk about this all the time. It's mm. like, uh, it's like one of the industries where you get a lot of 
shams, a lot of false promises. We fell prey to them as kids growing up in the muscle building community, taking every other supplement that promised to, mm-hmm. you know, add pounds of muscle or burn body fat. Um, and you see all these, you know, uh, these independent laboratory tests of supplements coming back. And every single time they do them, it's like, hey, 80% of the supplements didn't have anything that they said yeah. they did. And the other 20% had, you know, toxic chemicals and shit like that in them. Like, uh, what's it like navigating in that, in this industry, uh, competing against people who cut corners and have no problem lying to their customers? Yeah. And we try not to get caught up in that too much just because we like to stay in our lane with the blinders on. And uh, what are we focused on? You know, what are our core values as a company? Well, when we create products, we want to create the world's greatest products. We don't want to make something that's just going to be like everybody else to make money, right? Uh, green juice just to make a green juice because we know our audience will buy it. No, let's infuse it with ashwagandha. There's no other green juice with an Ayurvedic herb that in, that lowers stress and increases serum, right? Yeah, I mean, come yeah, on. Yeah. Um, so how can you change it enough and make it taste better than anything that's out there too? <clears throat> we did that for the green, the red juice, the gold. Um, but, you know, and, and working on everything else, we just kind of stay in our lane. We do what we do best at, and that's creating the community and then delivering a product that we know works. We did clinical trials on the green juice. So uh, did you get that information from the clinical trial? No, 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 no. Yeah, I read I read separate studies, but okay. no. Yeah. yeah. So lower stress, all mm. kinds of stuff. Excellent. Explain the, uh, the strategy behind the proprietary blend. Yeah. Well, I think um, there's so many influencers out there that just white label stuff. They're like, let's just white label it, then we'll have my own and I'll sell it because my face is on it. Mm-hmm. And that'll work for a certain period of time. But if you really want to create a global brand um, and impact a billion people's lives, you have to have custom formulations, things that are different. So that was one of the the philosophies behind that and the synergy of it, right? Uh, most, it, most green juices have 40, 50 different ingredients. And if you take the cup out, it's like, well, how much of this is actually in it? And mm-hmm. is it going to make a difference to my biochemical meat suit that I have on, right? Probably not. Mm-hmm. So if we just used 11 ingredients, what are the 11 most pure, potent ingredients that have synergy together that we could use that could impact me in such a way to where I'd have more mental clarity? Mm-hmm. I'd be more focused. Did you ever battle with potentially doing that or not doing that? Because I feel like we're in a market right now where uh, people are becoming more aware of these people pixie dusting things and yeah. they're, uh, they're kind of afraid. Sometimes they see proprietary blend and they go... Oh well, this I know he probably doesn't really have hardly anything in there. Oh, that's why he doesn't want to share. He's he's pixie dusting it. Did you ever go back and forth on that? Um, no, we've always just let's make it different. Let's have eleven, you know, eleven different things in the green juice, eleven things in the red juice, and the gold. It's worked really well for us. Mm-hmm. So now, how when did you when did you get uh, when did you found Organifi? When did you start the company? About three three and a half. Years ago, three and a half years yeah. ago, and and uh, you guys also have a protein powder. Yep. Why did you go the plant route and organic? Be- and and the reason why I ask is, more recently has it become a selling point to have organic uh, protein powders? But just not that long ago, I know when we started Mind Pump, you know, saying organic on a protein powder wasn't going to sell more. Probably made it more expensive because you yeah. couldn't use sucralose. <clears throat> What made you go that direction rather than going with everybody else? Because we have friends in the supplement yeah. industry and we would tell them, like when we first started Mind Pump, like, hey man, yeah. y- you should probably you make this organic because the market's starting to change. Like, nah, it's more expensive. It doesn't matter. People want to buy the one that tastes better anyway. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it matters. It matters to me. It matters to, um, if I was to give it to my family, which I do, I send it to them every month. My mom like healed her hand, like all kinds of crazy stuff that she's done with it. And my dad as well. So I'm willing to give it to my family. And Mm -hmm. if it's got a bunch of BS fillers, artificial sweeteners, things of that nature in it, then I don't want to sell it. Mm. Maybe I can sell more, but that doesn't matter to me. I'm not motivated by money. Mm -hmm. I'm motivated by impact in changing people's lives. So how do we create a product that's far superior? Our protein is super expensive to produce. It's probably more than anybody's to like actually make because of the ingredients that we have in there, the, the different stuff but that's okay. Like at the end of the day, I know that people are like we talked about, they're cleaning that frequency so that whatever they get in their body, the information that they're putting in their body, it's causes them to see the world differently. And then they create different results. 
It's exactly what you said. I always thought it was funny going into a supplement store and seeing health foods and then under health foods are protein powders that are, I mean, chemical shit storms. I remember thinking like, yeah. this is not a health food. Like, this is crazy that they would even yeah. label it that way. Can't even pronounce it. <laughs> no, no. And wreck your gut. Yeah. You know, wreck your gut health and, and, and the rest of your body on the promise that it's going to. Yeah. So the, re- the real reason, and I'll let you guys in on this secret hidden agenda here. Okay. I've never told anybody this. All right. Want, they know it all out there. You want yeah, gold teeth. Them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's exactly what you said. You know, right now we're at a time where uh, there's this pendulum swinging. There was a me society 10, 20 years ago. Now we're transitioning into a we society. There's a lot of turmoil with Trump and all the chaos and these mass shootings and everything else. I believe that really starts fundamentally with us individuals. Always. And it starts with our frequency. It starts with the energy that we have in our body. So if you and I can work together and put more good high vibing foods in people so that they have less Um, nutritional deficiencies that cause psychological disturbances, right? It's been proven. Then then we're doing the world a good thing. And Mm -hmm. if that costs more and we can't sell as much, but eventually people will catch on and we start to shift the way the world resonates and the way that it vibrates and we impact humanity on that level, then my soul's calling is fulfilled. Mm. I can't be depressed like that. Loving it every single day. I walk along the streets handing out samples of protein shakes just to get really? people freaking fired up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, your products, are they on the shelves? Are they retail or we is get, all? We're in about 1,800 stores right oh, now. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay. But it's very little in our business model. We're it's actually changing, looking, right? It looks like the model seems to be more direct to consumer. More direct. Yeah, we have companies reach out all the time. They're like, Jude, can we come in and you teach us how to do direct response? Like, we want to sell the people on, online and... Um, and those are all retail companies. Mm. So, but I mean, I want to get into more retail just because it's easier for our clients. Right. We want to be omnipresent with our brand, but uh, that's not our focus. Our focus is really online, mm. direct response. Who would you say is your biggest competitor in your space? Um, gosh, probably like Amazing Grass. Okay. And they're all retail. Mm-hmm. So if we were to look at, I don't even know who that is. I do. You, you ever seen yeah. them? They have like juices, green juices, and other th- uh, huge already, company. Ready to drink already? Yeah, they're like, and the, they're you've seen my Whole Foods. They're huge. Yeah. I mean, we're uh, revenue wise, we're like a little little fruit fly compared to them. Compared mm-hmm. to them. Oh wow, they're yeah, that big. Little wow. fruit bat. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> but uh, so I, I think direct response wise or like online, if we had to choose a competitor, <clears throat> gosh. I don't know, maybe on it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but they're bigger than we are too. So I don't know. We're just the little guys. On it's bigger corner. than you guys. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't would, think they are. Would you look at their yeah. w- when you look at your competitors? Is that does that drive you? Like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you. Is there no, a party no, that no, no, really? No, I lost all that. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Really? I used to be that guy. That's hard, uh, man. How do yeah, you do that? <laughs> we're still those guys. I, I realized. <laughs> I just I, I realized that that will. It's not healthy. It just right. causes stress. Well, if you just shift that competitiveness yeah. towards yourself, it's very yeah, or other right? instead, of, instead yeah. of it being competing against the world, you're competing against yourself. Which yeah. I think when people yeah. tap into that, that's when you get really yeah, um, yeah. Compare or uh, we just focus on connecting with more and more people. Like if I'm going to use that energy to get pissed off, like why not get pissed off about some of the bigger stuff that's happening on the planet mm-hmm. that we can shift through our company? Mm-hmm. You know, what's your day look like? What's a typical day look like? Um, cause you said, you know, you're, you're, yeah. you, you create a life for yourself where you're more the face and, uh, is it, yeah. so what does it look like? Do you have a schedule? So checking in, I got uh, three touch points every day. So three people, sometimes I'll come in and take them to coffee or, you know, we'll do lunch if it's somebody's birthday. So I love connecting with our people. I think that's important. And then also, um, the sea level team I connect with every day just to kind of see where everybody is. And if I have a VSL or something to shoot or videos, mm-hmm. Facebook ads or whatever it is, I do those. Who but, does the firing? Um, <laughs> Cause I, cause I, I, Lisa does now. Okay. You didn't meet Lisa. She's not here. Okay. But May, we have a human resource department now, so which is great. So in the beginning, I'm not the guy that was good <laughs> at firing to, anyway. That's, that's what I'm looking off. at. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. like, that's my worst uh, thing. Yeah. Like, I'm I feel like it's going to be so hard for you to fire me. I'd get you all in the fields, dude. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Too, too nice. We're going to talk out of the heart. Yeah. 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 Oh. 
it was terrible. Like I lost a lot of sleep firing the first couple people. Like wow. it was bad. For how me. did you handle it? Would you like when was the last time you had to fire someone? How long ago? Oh gosh, five six years ago. Really? I oh. realized that wasn't my superpower, and I'm like, all right, we need to put somebody else in this seat. <laughs> You're like, yeah. I don't want to do this. Yeah, it's slowing me down. <laughs> Like, I don't even, I'm so in the feels that I can't even go on YouTube anymore and read comments, you know, because oh, yeah. I, I have, we have a team of like 10 people that read our Facebook comments and YouTube and everything else. I think that's healthy just, and there's smart There's so though. many trolls, Oh yeah, you know? Oh, oh, YouTube is just the, getting YouTube's trolled the out. YouTube yeah. is the worst, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, so, you know, something that uh, I struggle with a lot, and we talk about this openly on our show all the time. Is you know we live in this new social media world, right? Where we're connecting with our, our followers all the time, and you do a really good good job of Thank doing you. that. And one of the things that I struggle with is being really good at that and doing that, and then also finding balance of not letting it consume my life, where I'm constantly checking my phone and being in my phone all the time. Do you notice that about yourself, or have you put like hard rules on yourself, like oh at this time I don't even touch, I don't even look at it? I mean. Um, I used to have those rules in place now. Um, I probably should still have them because I feel like I'm just attached to this thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, everywhere I go, I have that cell phone on me. So um, I have two days a week that are flex days where it's like I can do whatever I want. And I've been practicing guitar for three years, filling my time with piano. Um, I got a bunch of instruments at the house. I just, over the past couple of years, I've just become like addicted to music. Mm -hmm. Crazy drums like that... Uh, I bought this drum from a shaman and you play it. I played it at our annual meeting and people came out of this thing and it's like they did a ceremony or something by just hitting this drum. It li literally looks like it's from another planet. So I fill my time with a lot of creative stuff okay, that's cool. on those days to kind of recharge my soul and uh, fill me up. Mm. So that's good. What? But getting getting this out of the way is, was hard for sure to what, do that. What's your biggest challenge right now? Um. I think growth, you know, as far as bu business wise, if we're talking business, it's like we want to impact a billion people's lives. And as a business, sometimes you hit a wall and then it's like, how do you get past this? So God, we'll, billions, a big number. I know. Yeah. Let's well, talk we're, about we're that. growing like 30% every quarter. So it's like, how do you manage that growth? <laughs> mm -hmm. How do you continue to grow at that rate? We've hired 20 people in the past, I'd say what month, month wow. and a half. Wow. Maybe two. Mm. I don't know for sure. Are you I'm the feels guy. I'm not the numbers guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> CEO in here real quick. <laughs> are, are you afraid of growing too fast where the foundation falls out from underneath you? You see uh, that a lot with a lot a of A little companies. bit. Yeah, yeah, there's a small. Well, you said you just mentioned yeah. you have a CEO. What, at what yeah. point did you what, what point did you give that role up? Uh, just this year actually. Oh, beginning wow. of the year. Yeah, well, that was big. Was that was hard to give you up? talk about time? that a lot? It wasn't hard for me to give up actually. Hmm. And um, even when I started this business, I'm like, how can I, one of the best things I told myself was like, you need to replace yourself as quick as you can in every position that you have, right? Just, you'd learn that in business growing up. Mm -hmm. Like if you read um, E-Myth Revisited, mm -hmm. right? same mm -hmm. thing, old school. Great book, Michael Gruber. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you go through it and it's like, how can I replace myself here? And then you just, we, I think we have 110 people on the team now. Mm -hmm. This is just our local squad. But um, I got to a point where it's like, yeah, I don't really want to manage all these people and I'm not good at it. Like I'm not a good manager. I'm more of the vision guy and the, I guess the innovation, you know, helping with product ideas and stuff like that, creativity. So, so I'm like, Jamel, our CEO is going to be way more effective at this. He's an aeroscience engineer, understands people, like has a huge business acumen, money acumen, more than I have at this point in my life. And I'm like, you'd be perfect. So he stepped into the CEO role he started with me at the very beginning of Organifi, so he totally mm. gets it. And he's a learner. Like, he's just learning so fast. Now, in the, you've had him for a year, you said? Yeah, he's been the CEO for so, a year. He was I, the COO. Now, I'm really interested in this conversation because this yeah. is a conversation that we talk about a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we've got like, uh, we don't have a CEO. The four of us are yeah. kind of like this co-CEO thing, and that's eventually got to evolve and change. And we all yeah. recognize that yeah. and see that. Um, and I think the thing that we would be challenged by, which is where I want to ask this, is you know, in the last year, has have there been times where you've struggled like being the visionary guy and then the CEO, CEO number guy being like, no, we got to fucking do this. This is where the money's at or this is what, what we have to take the business. And you're going like, I want to take it over here. Have you guys had? Cars? Well, I know I have. A, we have a leadership team, right? Right. So five people on the leadership team right now. 
And I have a lot of ideas because I'm the vision guy. I could come up with a thousand ideas for a new product before noon tomorrow, right? And I know that it has to be screened by the team. Um, I trust them that they're going to screen the best ideas. So I'm just giving them what they need. I'm setting them up with connections that I've had for years in the business. I'm supporting them. I'm kind of just kind of like an observer almost, Mm -hmm. but I leave it up to them to make the decision. Mm -hmm. I'm still there very much to help. And if it starts to go down the wrong path or I feel like I need to direct it a different way, like I'll step in. But I found that I was just stepping in just to throw lightning bolts. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. Like you just have to trust, Mm -hmm. like trust that they know what they're doing and they do like, look at what they're creating. It's incredible. You never struggled with that breaking free of that. Cause I think that would be hard for some Mm -hmm. of us. You know, I think it'd be hard for us to go like, okay, just let's just throw the ideas out there and be okay with the team picking the right ones and watch them. Right. Yeah. Watch them for a little bit, have them demonstrate, you know, they've all demonstrated. They've been with me. May's been with me for seven years, Mm -hmm. the longest. She's our COO. And Jamel has been here five years, Amy three, I think. They've they've proven over and over again in small tests from the very beginning that they're the right person, the right people. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of trust for them. Have you seen a lot of growth since that switch? Um, Yeah. I mean- So you could, proof is in the pudding. Yeah, exactly. Lots of growth. Because now I can really focus what I'm good at. Mm. Yeah. Like my hot spots. Do you feel like you can really sprint now and yeah. do, do what you want like to do? Like whatever I want to do, I can do it. Yeah. The freedom that I have that I've created is pretty phenomenal. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to be a cool place to be at. Is the music yeah. part of your uh, just <clears throat> flourishing creative side now that you kind of- Yeah, just it? creativity. Mm-hmm. Just fun. Mm. Now, personally speaking, what are your, what's your greatest challenge? Not business. Hmm. Um, Gosh, I never look. I'm such an opportunist. When people ask me that, I'm like, "What's a challenge?" Say yes to everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, "What's a freaking challenge?" Yeah. Um, I would say, yeah, I don't really have any huge challenges right now, personally. It's a good place to be. Yeah, I don't really have any. Huge challenges. You seem like you're in a place of like gratitude right now. Super gratitude. Yeah. Yeah, Just every day. And if I go to a place of challenge, like that's the switch. Mm. Just start mapping it out. What am I grateful for? Just rampage of appreciation in that moment. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. Thank you for this. All day long, every day. Mm. Uh, Some more business questions for what has been what has yielded you some of the biggest returns in terms of your <clears throat> investment like is it is it social media advertising is it new media like podcasting youtube like wh- where do you see yeah. the biggest impact um biggest impact's definitely podcasting really like you Fantastic. guys are killing it you know you're really touching a lot of people's lives um in a deep way so podcasting is like deep as far as numbers wise as far as like actual uh, buyers mm-hmm. go with our mm-hmm. business. I would say cold traffic, mm-hmm. like Facebook really dialing that in. Probably. Yeah, Facebook advertising, YouTube advertising. You know, we met Google. you. Uh, we met you uh, years ago. Me and uh, Doug and I went to. Uh, I remember uh, Andy remember Jenkins. That? Yeah, yeah. We right? sat there and talked to you, and you were talking about converting cold traffic, and you guys were talking about your strategy, trying and to stuff. get it done. And it yeah. was funny. We start working with your company, and then I see me and Doug are like, "Oh shit, that's the guy that's we talked guy. to." <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So wild, and it worked. Yeah, it worked. How do you deal with the changing algorithms and shit that Facebook will throw at you guys? I mean, I know oh, people man. who had seven figure businesses that would go to, yeah. I mean, we cut like down by a third, like in in a day because of the changing. Yeah, it uh, it happens all the time. One week we'll be spending thirty grand a day, and the next week we'll be spending twenty. You know, it's just the fluctuation in advertising, and um, you just it's like the stock market. You don't know what your return is going to be at the end of the year, but you know, if you play the long game, eventually it's going to grow. Mm-hmm. So Facebook's very stable. It's, we'll always spend the majority of the money on Facebook, the way our business is built, the way our, av- our avatar, our personalities are online. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it, Facebook has been great. So we have, I guess, to answer your question more directly, we have three different media buyers for Facebook. So we got a media buyer that helps us with our, um, Shopify site. We have one that does our lives, our Facebook lives, like their strategy is amazing. Mm. And then another one like retargeting and micro niches and stuff like that. So anytime Facebook changes an algorithm, we have three different media buyers that are focused on three different parts of Facebook. So it's almost like they're not focused on just 
the thing, they're focused on three businesses in the thing. Mm. So if we want to put more money into the lives because we see that algorithms have shifted and we're getting more views for the videos and that transitions into a retargeting list that's bigger than the Shopify retargeting list and our cost uh, per buyers less, then we're going to go with that, right? Our ROAS, the return on ad spend, then we'll shift it to that. Mm. So, Well, being as plugged in as you are into, into social media, and we all know how powerful uh, the just new media is in, in in general, but more specifically, how powerful social media is. Where do you see the future of uh, some of these platforms like Facebook and uh, Instagram and YouTube and all these different? Because they seem to, I mean, they change so radically every year. Where do you see the future of those? Yeah, um, they've grown so much. I just I see a lot more augmented reality functionality. I think um, virtual reality. Did you see uh, 19 Crimes, that wine yet? Have you seen that? <laughs> no. Oh, you haven't? Oh, no. Yeah. First one trip. to do AR uh, for the wine. So they- Really? Yeah, it's a, it's called 19 Crimes. You can look it up. The wine's okay. It's not very great wine, but I think it, uh, the marketing piece of it's brilliant. brilliant. So you get this wine and they have an app that goes with it and it has like this old, you know, Western uh, gangster on there and you put your phone on the app over it and it turns into life and he yeah. talks to you through your phone it's the wildest thing ever it yeah. looks so dope we had an augmented reality company come in here like a month ago oh really I wanted to do it that was one of my ideas I'm like let's have <laughs> Throw that know, one on the, the ingredients board, huh? yeah. pop out of the Organifi canister and they actually did it they created it oh and no I'm like way. looking at it with my phone and I'm like this is awesome like, yeah. but I mean, Hell it's like 300,000 bucks <laughs> to have that. And Not it's that like, awesome. how many people are yeah. going to buy it? Awesome because if you have veggies coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, how many people are going to buy that? Really? Oh, yeah. that's funny. Yeah. What's your, yeah. what's your least favorite part of the business? Um, probably the, I'm not the data guy. Like the numbers and the meetings and the arduous, which is crazy sitting to down me for eight because hours. when I walk in here, yeah. you've all these companies that we've named, I've been behind the scenes a lot of these places, and like I am that guy. I mm-hmm. love the numbers, and I get my juices flowing being around here. We're surrounded by whiteboards right now with percentages and numbers. <clears> like I just want to spend all day in here, like breaking everything down with you. So it's funny that you say that, but yet you've got that everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's I know it's important for the business. Like it's if you don't know your data, then you don't have a business. Right. Mm-hmm. If you don't know what your process is, then you don't know what you're doing. Right. Right. So knowing that, that's why we have all this stuff. But if I had to choose my least favorite thing, that's that's probably it. Yeah, I'm people over numbers. Mm-hmm. So, did you? Was that one of the tasks that you delegated really quick and early? Mm-hmm. Okay, totally. Yeah, you're like, okay, we got this running. We're making enough money. Hire you. You yep. handle all this shit. I don't want to do with it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> but it would do me justice to actually like it more. So, of course, you know, let's give and take. Right? You, you gotta, you gotta focus on what you're good at. I yeah, because then you'll 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 do much better that way, and have other people handle that. What's part. What's cool is you guys you you'll appreciate this. I did a little research on Renaissance men way back in the day, like how they were able to master so many things, mm-hmm. and it's because one would be playing the piano for like an hour, and their brain would be maxed out and be ready to give that up, which operates in a certain part of our brain, right? Right hemisphere, mm. more creative, like that kind of stuff. But to get that to grow, like into let's say you want to increase your squat. You can do your right leg, but you got to do your left leg too to normalize and balance it out. So how do you operate the left side of your brain with something else? So they would go from the piano to say chemistry or trigonometry or something that was more analytical and left right afterwards. So they're balancing the left and right Exercising hemisphere, their brain out like that. growing right. both of the brain. So that's how Renaissance men did it way back in the yeah. day. Yeah. So crazy that they would, without yeah. the technology, they would put that together. Yeah. So How brilliant you, is that? You know, yeah. Paul, do you know who Paul check is? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Love Paul check. Great guy, right? That guy. So have you been there? You've, uh, oh, oh yeah. we've yeah. had him on the show. He's one of our favorite people. We've yeah, had him on the show several times. He's we were Uncle actually Paul. one of the first podcasts to have him on our show and, and he just blew everybody's minds and we love the guy and something that he does, which it, on the surface, if you look at it, like this guy's crazy. And yeah, a lot of the stuff silly, Paul does, but, you'll think that at first, right. but then you d- dive deeper and you realize how brilliant the man is. He'll work out hard, like he'll deadlift heavy, and then while he's resting, he Paint. paints. Yeah. So we did a, you, we did a, you, we did a YouTube. <laughs> Think about it. You're talking about Renaissance. Like how freaking right. perfect is uh, that? Yeah. That's awesome. We did a YouTube. Maxing out, and then he's just painting some really creative. Yeah. And he'll listen so to he'll, sun he'll, he'll rep like four or 500. Yeah. Bro, he, he, yeah. had, he was deadlifting, I think, 315 quite or, brilliant. 400 or 400 pounds. Yeah. We had an easel set up for him. We have the YouTube. It's on our channel. And, and this is his normal thing. Yeah. And he, he went over and, he, and he'd rip up a couple reps and he'd come over and he'd paint for a while and he's coaching to the camera. So that's a great video. It's yeah, a great video. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, oh my god yeah. it's so cool he made it for us too so we got it framed up at our at our studio and everything so i gotta set my easel up in the gym at home we're doing that send a video yeah. to check to give it yeah. a try it's oh very dude, yeah very very cool it's brilliant absolutely yeah. brilliant and you're, what you're saying in terms of what renaissance men did i mean oh I mean, he is he is the modern day like yeah. paul check yeah. <laughs> the dude goes outside and builds rocks like yeah. rock statues and- yes did you see our jab at him yesterday <laughs> no oh you didn't no oh yeah you gotta see we, our we took pebbles yeah we, we did stacked, no. we stacked like four rocks like this high you know all of a sudden and then we took a shot from behind we're not that we're doing this right Paul yeah. <laughs> yeah he's become a really good friend of ours for Absolutely. sure the guy's amazing yeah. well shit man you've created a, a, a pretty awesome culture it's, we're, we're happy to finally come down here we, uh, yeah we I love having like, you guys we actually love your products um, you know yep. uh, your staff made a huge impression on us uh, uh, originally which is why we even you know started talking to you guys and um, now that I'm here I'm, I, I feel bet, even better about working with you guys and yeah. that we met you in person so thanks for coming on the show, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks for having me on the show, guys. Yeah. This is awesome. awesome. And I love what you're creating and the impact that you're making in the world too. We love supporting you in any way that we can. Appreciate so it. We're believers and you got fanboys out here. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're we're gonna, all we'll go take some pictures it. before we leave here. Yeah. 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 All you got to do is email blast your, yeah. your 5 million people this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> and then... Uh, you got it on record. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Spread the so, word. And we also have a discount for your fans. Family, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Off. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll record an intro afterwards, cool. and we'll make sure to tell everybody that. Yeah, got it. About their coupon code. Cool. cool. I so, love it, buddy. Excellent. Thanks, right man. On. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank yeah. you. Good stuff. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at MindPumpMedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes Maps Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.